Basics of Blast Wave Theory Week 2 Types of Explosion Mechanical Explosion Nuclear Explosion Chemical Explosion Chemical Explosion, Combustion Now types of explosion, there are the three categories which we have mentioned in here. Uh, one is mechanical, some people call it physical explosion, the second one nuclear explosion and the third one chemical explosion. Our main concern would be upon chemical explosions, but let us try to look what is mechanical explosion? Now the largest mechanical explosion or physical explosion happened uh, nearby here. Uh, Krakotowa or Toa or Krakoto eruption back in 27th August 18. 83. It actually started in May and the largest explosion happened on, on, on this date. Now, basically what happened? S superheated steam was generated and how this steam was generated? A huge amount of lava went into, into in contact with sea water which was cold and this lava was very hot. So superheated steam was generated which caused this explosion. The severity of explosion was such that it was heard uh, in Perth, Australia about 4500 kilometers away. At that time more than 36,000 people died and uh, there were very many barometers which, uh, which got damaged uh, because weather uh, registering and uh, not forecasting but registering was uh, up in there for sea voyages. The estimated yield of this explosion was 200 megaton TNT equivalent. A bit about nuclear explosions. In nuclear explosion, 50, only 50% 50 of the heat uh, is generated, rest of the 50% energy is in the form of electromagnetic radiation or X-rays. Just an order of magnitude, the first atomic bomb used against uh, uh, developing or against population was uh, in Hiroshima in August, the same month. The estimated yield about 12.5 kiloton and the second one Nagasaki, it was about 22 kiloton. Now the interesting thing in here is this device was barrel type and this was implosion type. Now both used high explosive to propel uh, the fissile material or to compress the fissile material. Now most of the understanding about, about uh, high explosives or, or energetic material behavior was done in Manhattan project where these bombs were uh, manufactured or designed and manufactured. Now, a bigger from these uh, atomic bombs is thermonuclear bomb or sometimes called hydrogen bomb. Uh, they, they use these atomic bomb as trigger. Now the biggest ever detonated uh, uh, in the world 
was a Russian made uh, Tsar Bomba, uh, king, king of the bombs and the yield was 50 megaton. I guess from, from the literature we see the American detonated about 50 megaton, uh, megaton yield device. But if you look at the work of nature here, this mechanical explosion was 200 megaton. Okay, now we come to chemical explosion. Now, if black powder is confined and burned, it causes explosion. We can, uh, we know dust explosions do take place in coal mines, even flour mills which have uh, this uh, starch dust, they can explode. On the same principle, a uh, fuel air bomb like daisy cutter had been used or are being used. High explosive detonation also causes explosion. So these are few kinds of explosion, chemical explosion, which we encounter. Okay, in here we are able to un understand a bit and define or quantify what basically is explosion. Now first thing, there must be gas production. Okay, uh, let me first ignore this what is in the parenthesis. The second one, energy production should be there. Third one, energy and gas production both should be very rapid. Now I have put gas in parenthesis purposely. The fourth step, all these processes must continue until everything is consumed. Now, let us check whether this definition of ours is perfect or not. Let me go to back to the, the burning reactions I introduced first. <clears throat> now, first one, see wood burning, gas is being produced, a lot of gas is being produced, but it does not cause any explosion at all. In here, black powder, now if we confine, yes, then it would explode. So it means this energy release per gram is not important. What is important? The gas production rate or the heat production rate is important. Now interesting thing is, when we confine this black powder, it burning rate goes up. So if you burn black powder openly, nothing would happen. There would be no bang at all. But if you confine it, the burning rate goes up. So basically what is going up is the power generation, not the energy generation. So energy generation per gram does not matter much to cause an explosion. So if we have higher amount of energy release per unit mass, it may not cause any explosion at all. Now, the definition we have summarized, there should be gas production and rapid heat release. But look in here, the third reaction, no gas produced at all. Do you know what this flash powder is? Sometimes ago, some decades ago, if you look at black and white pictures, you would see some persons uh, pressing the button of a camera and then you hear a bang and there is a flash coming up. So they burn this flash powder and it causes a bang. So it causes an explosion. Now how come this causes an explosion? There is no gas production at all. The interesting thing is, atmospheric gas is available. 
now the atmospheric gas because the energy injection or the energy production is very rapid so it very rapidly heats up the surrounding air so gas is always there now interesting thing is it is not confined so we we have given one definition that it should be confined now i would like to introduce a known concept or not, not uh, really introduce i would try to remind you something called inertia now if you try to push something you cannot suddenly put into a motion its inertia resist until and unless you have a very very high impulsive force so when this flash powder generates high power a lot of heat in in a very short time then the surrounding air because of inertia doesn't move away immediately it gets heated so this is called inertial confinement so the gas inertia itself serves as some kind of a barrier that's why when fission was in uh, discovered fission was discovered then there was a debate that this nuclear explosion would not cause any damage at all because there would be no pressure wave or or blast wave generated the argument people put forward was that chemical explosions these chemical explosion they produce gas while this nuclear explosion would produce heat only no production of gas so then a scientist uh, named g i taylor came up with this idea that this rapid heat production would heat up the surrounding air and air would not move immediately it would provide some kind of a confinement inertial confinement and that's how it would cause an explosion so now we come to our our definition of explosion in here you see so either there should be gas production or gas should be already present in the environment so again it would cause an explosion if gas already present in the in the surrounding to me this completes the definition except this word rapid now how much rapid is rapid really so we need to quantify it now this this definition of rapidity i think varies and with the course of time when we proceed through this these lectures we would start realizing it now uh, we have seen that wood burning cannot cause an explosion so wood is not an energetic material 